Folks, I think I found it. I think I found the sweet spot in TV for 2023. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is my review of the Hisense U7K 4K HDR Mini LED TV. I've had my eyes on this TV for a while. I have to admit, I had some pretty high hopes going into this review for this television. Not lofty expectations, just high hopes. And I'm pleased to report my hopes have not been dashed. I'm gonna tell you just about everything you really need to know about this TV and spoiler alert, there's a very good chance this TV could be exactly what you should buy. I'll run through what this TV does well, what it doesn't do well, but more importantly, we'll talk about whether or not the Hisense U7K is gonna be the TV that I recommend to the most folks who come asking for TV buying advice. Before we dig in, I need to ask you for a favor. Will you please do me a solid and help me make this video wildly successful? We have to play YouTube's algorithm game just like other creators, and for this specific video, I need it to reach as many folks as possible. So if you would kindly consider giving it a like and leaving a comment as usual, you guys are always awesome about that. But also share it to someone you know who is looking to buy a new TV and could use a little nudge in the right direction. If you can share it, not only will you help your friends and family out, but you'll help me out a ton. Of all the TV videos you should share, I really think this is the one. It's the best jumping off point for folks just starting to research TVs, whether the Hisense U7K ends up being the right TV for them or not. So thank you so much in advance. I try not to ask for such specific favors often, so I hope you don't mind I'm doing so today. Okay, I am super excited to tell you about this TV, so let's get to it. Let's start with a quick refresher on where the Hisense U7K stands in Hisense's TV lineup and the TV market in general. In Hisense's lineup, there's the UX, which is their limited edition cost no object TV, kind of a specialty. The real flagship of Hisense's TV lineup this year is the U8K, and this U7K just sits right below that. You might compare the U7K to TCL's Q7, for example. It's kind of an upper mid-level TV, or you could say it's a lower level top tier TV. You know how there's a pretty fine line between a medium rare and medium stake? This TV kind of treads a similar fine line. Now for a quick price comparison. Understanding that these prices were correct at the time I made this video, but will likely vary a bit over time. Here's a breakdown graphic of the Hisense U7K prices at various sizes next to the step up Hisense U8K prices at various sizes. And what you'll see here is that generally speaking, you can choose to get a larger U7K for the same price as the step down size of the U8K. So the 65 inch U7K costs about the same as the 55 inch U8K and so on and so forth. Or you could just look at it from the perspective that the U7K is just a more affordable TV than the U8K. I mentioned this because we'll talk a little bit about whether given your budget, you might be better off getting a larger screen U7K or a smaller, higher performance U8K. Now for the basics of the TV, and I'm not gonna dwell on this forever, but it's a pretty attractive design with surprisingly solid build quality. You don't see that often at this price. We've got a stamped metal back, solid feet that you can position wide as we have them here, or more narrow if you have a smaller stand. It comes with a backlit remote and it's got a fairly robust speaker system built in with a subwoofer on the back to add some bass to the rather small downfiring speakers built into the bottom of the TV. For the price, I think you get a pretty attractive TV. Let's now dive into this TV's picture performance. You know what time it is. Welcome to a review segment I like to call Numbers for Knit Nerds. Just got a little costume change here, hold on. All right, now we're gonna dive into some technical details on this TV, and if that doesn't sound like something you're interested in, feel free to skip this section using the time codes in the description, because once I'm done rattling off some of this measurement data, I'm definitely gonna wrap it all up in observations that everyone can understand, okay? Now, about those measurements. As you've come to expect, I took most of my measurements from the TV's filmmaker mode preset in both SDR and HDR. Now, this time I used the default color temperature setting of warm one and worked from there because that's how the TV is set up out of the box. Some of these measurements are a bit different if you select warm two, but as I'll soon discuss, things looked pretty solid before I did any tweaking at all. 
The white balance in SDR filmmaker mode was damn good for a TV at this price. Errors were mostly in the bright white areas with the white trending a little too cool or blue. It was an easy fix by knocking the blue gain down in the two point white balance resulting in really solid white balance. It was the same for the HDR white balance, which by the way, must be adjusted separately. Color accuracy out of the box was very good for SDR and outstanding for HDR. The only rogue colors are green and cyan and really not all that out of whack by the numbers. The brighter those colors got, the more they strayed from accuracy, but the errors are low enough that most folks will rarely, if ever, pick up on them. That is outstanding performance for a TV of this price. Now for everybody's favorite part, peak brightness. Interestingly, in SDR filmmaker mode, the peak brightness out of the box was at about 530 nits, and that's at about 80% on the brightness setting. That is way too bright for the accuracy police, but for most folks, that kind of SDR brightness is gonna be exactly what they want. So while it doesn't seem to fit the intention of filmmaker mode, it's a smart move for making customers happy. Now you can pull the brightness down for SDR if you watch in a dark room, or you can use the embedded light sensor to automatically make those adjustments based on how bright or dark your room is. But, and I need to make a big deal out of this, if you want the best brightness this TV can provide, you really need to turn that light sensor off. Here's us doing exactly that. I found that while it does a decent job of adjusting the brightness depending on your room, it messes around with the white balance in a way that I don't care for. So I turned it off and left it that way. The story around peak brightness in HDR is kind of interesting. So in case you're new to my TV reviews, historically Hisense TVs outperform their claimed peak brightness. That was true of the U7G and U8G two years ago. It was true last year with the U7H and U8H. And it was even true of the U8K that we reviewed earlier this year. For instance, Hisense would print 1000 nits peak brightness on the box and the TV would handily outperform that by punching up to say, 1300 nits. At least that's been my experience. That has not been the case for me with this specific U7K TV sample, but I think I might have an outlier here. My readings for peak brightness in HDR with a 10% white window came in at about 750 nits. And when I moved the test pattern to a 25% window, it bumped up to 850 nits, and that's the highest I saw it get. First of all, it's odd that a 25% window would read higher than a 10% window. Normally it's the other way around. Second of all, that's well short of Hisense's claim for a thousand nits. Like I said, I expected this TV to outperform Hisense's claims. Anyway, ditching the white window for the Spears and Munsell Peak HDR highlight pattern, I saw real highlights at about 600 nits. Now, I normally don't do this, but I checked a few other reviews from reviewers that I respect, and they got right at about that 1000 nit peak on their test bench. I've rooted around in all the settings and made sure no eco or power saving settings were on, local dimming is set to high as it should be, and I even toggled dynamic tone mapping on and off just to see what happened. This sample is just not as bright as those I'm seeing reviewed elsewhere. I don't think that there's anything wrong with this TV. I just think that's how this sample is behaving. Honestly, I'm not too worried about it though, because perceptually, there's not a ton of difference between 850 and 1000 nits. And the average picture level of this TV tracks exactly as expected with about 550 nits full field brightness. Okay, moving on. As I mentioned earlier, color performance came in great for SDR and even better for HDR. I saw 97% of P3 color gamut and 76% for BT2020, and the only notable color errors were at the brightest end of the spectrum. This TV flawlessly performs 3-2 pull-down for judder-free 24 frame per second movie and TV playback, though there is a predictable stutter in the bright areas on slow panning shots due to the TV's excellent pixel response time. Time. The U7K does have a black frame insertion feature and it is, as expected, very flickery and I can't stand it, but that's true for almost every TV that I review. But if you want BFI, it is available. Upscaling is very respectable on this TV in general and great for the price of the TV. Great 
who am I, Tony the Tiger? Anyway, it handily outperforms the TCL Q7 in terms of sharpness when upscaling 720p content, though there's less of a difference from 1080p up to 4K. In fact, image processing overall is pretty stellar on the U7K. You will see some color banding on low bit depth sources like YouTube or Sling TV. And unfortunately, the smooth gradation feature doesn't seem to have much of an effect at all. I feel like it's here in the menu, but it almost seems like it's been disconnected inside. I see no improvement with this on low, medium, or high, so I just left it off. Blooming control is very good. I'd say the TCL Q7 is just slightly better in this one area, but you'd never know it without putting the two side by side. Black levels are generally excellent and contrast is outstanding for a TV at this price. Okay, now that we've got the technical details covered, let's just speak more broadly about this TV's performance. Honestly, I've lost count of how many hours I've spent watching this TV. Just normal everyday content from YouTube to TV shows to live sports to streaming movies and 4K Blu-rays and well, here's the takeaway. This is what most of you need to know. I think the Hisense U7K is the smartest TV buy for the most amount of people. I have already recommended it to several friends and a couple of extended family members, and every person who has bought it went out of their way to email or text me to tell me how thrilled they are with their new U7K TV. The U7K's performance is good enough to satisfy a video enthusiast on a tighter budget, and far better than most folks will be expecting when they take it home. It offers awesome color accuracy out of the box, so long as you use filmmaker mode or theater day or theater night. It retains HDR highlights well. This TV rolls off gently. It does not, I repeat, it does not hard clip. It's brilliant and vibrant for all kinds of content. It upscales your cable, satellite, or DVD collection well. The user interface is solid and reliable at least for now. Motion resolution is quite good on this TV. I watched a lot of fast moving sports and I was never disappointed with quick camera moves up and down the basketball court or football field. Movies looked great, TV shows were practically flawless. Game mode is excellent on this TV. Game mode picture performance is really not all that far off from the more accurate picture modes. Plus, it offers a fun gaming dashboard and supports FreeSync VRR and refresh rates up to 144 hertz if you've got a PC that can support that. And it even sounds pretty decent considering most TV speakers just sound downright awful. This TV just ticks all the right boxes. It is, in my opinion, the best value in TV. It hits that sweet spot of performance and price. You can pay more, but you won't get a lot more. Whereas you could pay less, but you will get a lot less than this TV offers. I mean, I think that's why I'm gonna make this a go-to recommendation for anyone who is not a knit nerd. The TV is not perfect though. While it has outstanding anti-reflection on it, which minimizes glare and is a good TV for daytime viewing where you can have some sun coming into the home or maybe you just have all the lights on, the off angle viewing is not good. Now to be fair, most TVs at this level and even above this level don't have good off angle performance. The second you step off from dead center in front of this TV, the contrast and the color starts washing out. But again, that is par for the course. Now they could improve the off angle by using an IPS panel, but the black levels blooming and halo issues would take a small hit. Speaking of which, I believe the 75 inch version of this TV does use an IPS panel. So it'll have better off angle viewing, uh, but with more dimming zones, I'm hoping it's black levels and blooming control should still be pretty good even with that IPS panel. Perhaps not as excellent as we see on the 55 inch and 65 inch models, but hopefully still solid. Also in the not great column, uh, this TV, and I'm hoping this is just a bug, I'm checking with Hisense, but for whatever reason, this TV in HDR via HDMI sources, it keeps reducing the peak brightness to 78. I can't figure out why, so I don't love that. Oh, and don't worry, I always tested HDR peak brightness at 100. I was absolutely sure of it, so don't worry, I didn't drop the ball there. So, for the vast majority of you out there watching, if you've been wondering if maybe the Hisense U7K might be the right TV for you, you want really good picture quality, but you don't wanna spend insane amounts of money to get it, I 100% throw my full weight behind this TV. It has been great to live with this TV for a couple of weeks, and I think most of you are going to absolutely love it. Now, for those of you who consider yourself a more casual knit nerd, like you enjoy the company, but you're not a card-carrying member, 
You might be wondering if you're better off getting the U7K or the U8K. And to anyone who is having a tough time deciding between the two, here's what you need to know. The U8K is a brighter TV. It has brighter average picture level and its HDR highlights are also brighter. It's got a bit more punch to it. And when there's more ambient light, it can maintain the perception of contrast and color vibrancy just a bit better than the U7K can. If you watch during the day a lot and you want the best possible experience when watching during the day, then I think the U8K is probably worth the upgrade. For most folks, including would-be TV enthusiasts who do most of their watching in a dim to dark room, or can at least make it dim or dark when they want, the U7K is really all you need. Just, it's a delightfully, surprisingly great TV. It's better than the TCL Q7, and while not quite as great as the TCL QM8, it gets mighty close for a lot less money. Final message to you is, buy with confidence. The Hisense U7K gets two very enthusiastic thumbs up for me, and I'm looking forward to recommending it to most folks who call for TV buying advice. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think of the U7K? Think this might be your new TV? Still tempted by the U8K or maybe the TCL QM8? Tell us all about your experience in the comments so others can learn from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. If I get interrupted by a helicopter one more time,